good afternoon. 21st of October 2019, Nyland Road, quarter to five, and I'm just taking the dog up the back roads for her evening walk. It's a bit cooler now, temperatures only reach 30 today, cooler at night and cooler in the morning. This is a little uh, plot of land that somebody keeps picking on. Landed from the village, and they're in there. You can even see them, and three guinea fowl. This is his garden, where he grows his vegetables. And uh, he's got one of beans over there at the back. Ah, I can see he's spraying them. And he's got wheat uh, corn growing here. Aubergines over there, just finished. Yellow pepper across the back. And he's just away from water now. And he planted these out last year, and this one's blown against the fence. But can you see that there? The gourd, the size of that gourd. Under there, look at that. I don't know what they use them for. Um, <laughs> you normally see them. Hanging up in the houses and uh, in the cavernas. They must be like sort of marrows, but I don't think anybody uses them. There's another big one growing there, but I say I can't see if there's anything on it. And these are um, cucumbers or courgettes. Can you see one there? Cabbages. Some lettuce over the back, and something else he's planted out in all for the winter. There are lots of little uh, plots like that up here, little allotments. There was a bigger one up here um, that had pigs, but uh, it's been abandoned. Either the person is uh, no longer able, interested, or alive. That I started it off. We did this pigs three or four years ago, but uh, the last couple of years it's just overgrown and abandoned. Sorry about the jerking here, Mara's uh, picking up the scent as usual. Just too much for her nose up here, you know, bread hunting dog. She just hears and smells the birds. See birds in the trees and the bushes. So this is just another uh, addition to the walks I'm going to do all around here. I find that'll be of interest to quite a lot of people. If you come to the island of Rhodes, you normally come for a week or two weeks lying in the sun, on a sunbed, or in the at the beach in the sea but when you come to the interior of the island it's, uh, it's fantastic it was obviously um, a volcanic island at one point the whole um, south of Gion. this is the Dodokanese that rode the long sea and if you look at it in Google Maps, you see it's a nice big circle, it looks like it's about a ring of uh, an old volcanic crater. But I think here, where we are, that's the village way down there in the distance, where we just came from. It's like this all the way around, and we're in a bowl. Very hot in the summer, and very damp in the winter. It's an olive tree here that's a... Uh, small variety and they're black, black holes that you pickle. They're due to be harvested sometime in November when the olive oil factory uh, opens. It only opens in November and runs through to January roughly. And that's how long it takes for everybody to pick their olives, especially if it's an uh, old person and they've got 150 trees and no to help collect. Uh, with them. Uh, still butterflies going about 
don't know if you can see them. There they are. We're we'll just going up this uh, left hand side of the crater and go further up the top into the town, then go back over the top and back down to the village. You see a lot of bamboo here. This is uh, a wet part. It's a little riverbed. It's bone dry at the minute, but um, in the winter and the spring when it rains, it's very sodden in there. Uh, and all these roads are pretty well washed away. You can see the tracks in there, but we get a big digger and a grader uh, that come up and relay the surface of the roads and the grader comes up and scrapes them and so it's drivable and walkable again until the next monsoon um, when you're on holiday and you come here it's normally June, July, August, September uh, you never see a drop of rain um, but when it rains God, it rains Lots of pine here. Some of them are like Scots pine, Douglas fir. Um, but I think they're indigenous to roads, these pine. And they must have adapted to the extreme heat. In Scotland they've got to adapt to the extreme cold. Um, but these ones survive um, well here. And the bamboo here is uh, always in the wet patches. And once bamboo gets hold, you can never get rid of it. But there you are, you're ready made. Stick for your garden, for your plants, or even a fishing rod. Um, a lot of the old fishing rods were made out of bamboo. I used to have one when I first went fishing, and it was made out of this stuff. But there's, uh, there's one that's complete. Just put a line on it to top it. Still hard, still green, but that one's been pulled out. Come on Mara, we're going up this road, here, up here. We're just taking a wee shortcut, just taking out a, a loop there. Um, just cutting onto the top track. Lots of variation of plants here, and uh, herbs. Um, the herbs that are here normally are um, Sage, thyme, uh, oregano, what's the oregano? And uh, Mara's got something in her face. You got it out? You see it? You see it? You see it? There's lots of birds and things from these plants that are here that fall in the ground. And she picks them up on her feet. But she can normally get them out herself, but uh, sometimes she just needs help. Just a young dog and she's pulling up all the time. She's getting better and better, but um, she's like the Duracell rabbit. Never stops. This is an old uh, Itaki up here. That one of the local villagers, Manolis comes up here to get away from the village and probably um, it's a big you must go in there somewhere <laughs> I can't confirm that but uh, it has been known that these little places are good for that in the winter Suma is uh, like grappa it's all the leavings from making the wine and what's left, they um, distill that up and it's like uh, pure, pure uh, alcohol nice view there, I call it um, the Misty Mountains that's what it looks like range after range now see the roads crisscrossing here and going down here and up here they cover the whole island. I've driven everywhere. Have you got a license to go and cut firewood for the, the winter because that's normally uh, the fuel that they use. 
because there's no coal here on this island and I believe in Greece it's only lignite that they burn an old transit there, quite an old type one of the first and you use uh, people that like to do up transit vans so you get a lot of these lying about in the fields, Volkswagen, Volkswagen Beetles but not the ones with the small windows at the back that everybody here after but really old the landscape changes all the time here we're on the rock bed here and then it turns to this stuff, it's like sand and you see a couple of sand martin holes there that sand martins have made their nest and then you see the shells see the shells sticking out there they're everywhere obviously this came up from the sea many years ago and uh, you find shells embedded in the rocks everywhere and uh, the rocks that you see broken up there are uh, just conglomerate rocks where it's been molten rock and they've picked up all the pebbles from the seabed rolling their way down the hills never view the village um, it's nice at night no wind you see the rocks there, the conglomerate where it's all sea pebbles all rounded pebbles that have been washed in the water and rumbled up and down for hundreds of years you can see the sea there and the, see the, the hills down there that Kalathos you're looking at or the direction of Kalathos when we get round here um, you will see Lardos village and it's a nice view um, from up here I mean all the views are fantastic if you like trees and solitude if you're a hill walker a hiker this is the place to come they come in October, November and uh, March, April, May because the temperatures are just in the 20s, high 20s maybe get over 30 but not very often but um, sometimes it can be incredibly hot and sometimes it can be wet but wet is not normal in these months there's the sea again we're in the Mediterranean which is the southern Aegean with the Dokinese Islands and that is Lardos Bay across here named after the closest village which is there which is uh, Lardos and there's the uh, hope the sun is no blot in this I'll try and put it down a bit uh, the Misty Mountains I call them Mount Atavirus away in the distance here the highest peak on the island I think it's just 3,000 or maybe 5,000 metres but it's the biggest peak on the island a lot of the islands fully peaks and hills and troughs like this all these um, pathways the one you see down there crosses there there's another one over there and there's one across the other side there you can see going up to the road to Lerma but they crisscross everywhere you can walk for hundreds of kilometres and never see a soul so if you're uh, a walker and you'd like to come here where the sky is like this most days and it's not too hot this is the place for you look at it up on Google Maps and go across the whole south of the island so the whole island crisscrosses the east path and they're obviously built for um, taking the, the local villagers to their land and fields and everything Mara is heavy pulling here and uh, she's just choking herself freezing away there because she's straining against this harness I got the harness because when I put the lead on the collar she would choke herself to death she's pulling and I can't get her to stop Mara 
When I stop, and then show the lights for a few further, as soon as I start walking again, it's all like a rocket. So there's the sea there. And there's the sea there. And this peninsula between the sea is where you'll find the village of Lindo. The peak that you can see in the distance there, across the other side, that takes you to Lindo. The jewel in the Rhodes Crown, apart from Rhodes Town itself. Beautiful place, but um, deserted in the winter. It's incredible. And all the tourists are gone, if you've ever been to Lindos, you are shoulder to shoulder. You can't see the shop windows, the streets are that narrow. You can only bring scooters or small three-wheelers down to supply the shops and that, or small rascals like trucks that can sit down the street. Um, but in the winter, it's empty. There's a light on at one end, the windows, and you can walk through all these little streets that you are shoulder to shoulder, not be a soul, or very few people, and um, get to the other end and there's another light. They're only infrequently dotted about the street, and it's not creepy, but it's strange. Walking, uh, walking through it when there's nobody there. Pethcos, which is over in that direction, the other side of Lardos, um, heading towards Lindos on that side. Um, it's deserted, ghost town. All the signs for the restaurants are all lit up, like black pool illumination. In the summer, are closed. Black bags taped over the lights the menu board and everything else, all the tables and chairs are all gone inside. Uh, it's really weird. But it's nice at the same time because uh, although it's fantastic for tourists here, the roads are chalked in the morning with everybody coming down from Road Town to Lindos. And there are about 30 coaches in Lindos every day. And they all have two hours down in the village. Now from 9 o'clock in the morning till about 3 o'clock in the afternoon you can't get moving. After 3 o'clock you can actually come up, wander through the streets till uh, the bars and the restaurants open again at night for everybody that's staying there to come for a meal or the surrounding area. But in between that time you can walk through there perfectly. Look at the views from here. Fantastic, yeah. The church tower there in the village is just getting an, an overhaul and it's looking beautiful. I'll put the flags up for the Poissy Day on Monday when the Greeks told the Italians to get to, as they say in Scotland. And it's a, there's another word over after get to, starts with an S, like Captain Pirelli's mandolin when he went to the town hall in the island and the answer was F off. Well, that's celebrated on the 28th of October of the year at all the churches and the schools are out. All the kids got black skirts, trousers and white shirts, blouses and they march up to the um, memorial uh, and lay wreaths and do a little service. It's really nice to see uh, hopefully Monday I'll be up there and I'll um, take a video and um, include it in a short clip into uh, one of my future videos because all these uh, sides of the island um, or just even this little bowl we're in produce different things. That side over there there's a lot of um, molten rock and um, granite and crushed crystal and uh, you can see it all there. All the quartz that runs through the rocks everywhere. So I'll do a separate video on the olives and I'll do one on the rocks and the strata and I'm sure it'll be of interest to somebody. Certainly of interest to me and I've done a few uh, trials and uh, I'm not quite there yet with the editing or the camera work. But when I am 
I will upload them onto YouTube and you can see uh, in depth um, what it's like to live in a small Greek village away from the hustle and bustle of the tourists. This is the doctor's uh, little kitaki up here and he is the doctor uh, a GP now, he used to be in charge of the hospital, uh, small hospital medical centre in um, Archangelus. And now he has a practice GP in Archangelus. And he comes up here after his work, and I know when he's there because uh, his little quad bike is sitting up there on the hill. And I'll see it when we walk past. So we'll head back down now back to the village and this is the top side of the bowl where everything in the ground is uh, from the sea seashells, clams, options all this here and the ground here this is where slabs the rock that come out here and it seems to be that this is squeezed out by pressure um, from somewhere and this is the stuff that gets squeezed out. Now it might well be uh, big eels or some dropping that come out here. But I keep thinking it's like stone, but you know, it turns like that, doesn't it over the years. Um, but it looks as though you can see in that pile there, it's just all squeezed out there. I know you uh, geologists will be able to tell us what it is, but uh, they're really weird. They you know they look like a... Uh, well, they do like wet your toilets or something, huh? Eh? Have a look. You know when you're uh, walking down some of the beaches and you see and you see these big piles of uh, sand and you know there's a lugworm or a ragworm in there and you see the guys digging them out and there's a breathing hole and then there's a pile. Well, that might just be the piles that have... Uh, solidified over the years went hard. My doctor's red quad bike. And he'll be sitting around the front in the sun. Or he'll be watching the telly. And he'll go back down on his quad bike just before it gets dark back then he's in the middle. You can see these uh, rocks here being shoved up and they're sitting straight up as if they've been came up and sitting like that. I mean that's natural and it comes along here. And uh, there's another big one slab looking up there. This uh, bit here um, used to be uh, an Italian uh, gun position uh, during the war when the Italians held the island. You can see the two uh, balustrades coming out there and the gun sat in the middle and it pointed down to Kalathos coming through the gap there. So anybody that was going to come through the gap there, this was the gun position for the um, Italian army. Probably be um, a mountain artillery unit that were here. I found um, Italian coins dated 1941. This is where they lived. So there's the gun position in the bushes here. And just round this corner. It never used to be as wide as this, but when the doctor got his fence uh, built, it was based in concrete. So they got the big concrete trucks in here and then right round it. But it brings it up to this little abandoned house where Probably the crew of the gun soldiers lived in here. This is Italian, Italian gun. That's uh, probably about half a dozen. The crew, don't know. Anybody that looks in and knows in and about this might know better. But um, obviously it had a window there and it had a chimney flattened a bit over the back there. And it's all made up of uh, rock from the sea. And they've obviously squared some of it off. But you can see in the rocks, all the shells, all through the 
hoch zu diesem Rock hier. Daneben. Aber was nicht das da? Gone. The beehives down there. There used to be a lot of bees just down at this bit here, but um, the old guy, I think, maybe died now and gave it up. Just checking. The last time I've done this, I put it on another set, and all I was getting was the one picture. And I've done a run up here on the scooter, and uh, never got anything. Just me starting the main stop. I'm getting to that age where. The sun is affecting me. Well, I'm blaming you for it. Used to be the beer, but I don't drink beer anymore. Mara's uh, nose are on the way back down now. She knows she gets her dinner when they get back, so it's the pool back down hill now. It's fantastic to have all the, all the times. The higher up you go, they all have just stayed out, and it's just a uh, thing. On the seat bit. Mara, 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 stop, stop, Mara, stop, Mara. So it's a lovely evening, isn't it? A breathy wind, well, a little slight breeze, but you can only feel it in your skin, you can't see it blowing anything. All the hair is here, this is the stage, it's everywhere, and it's here. Very strong and pointy. Keeps me in mind of uh, rabbits. When we used to go there uh, and rabbits or hunting rabbits, when you got to the rabbit warren, the smell, there's a peculiar smell um, at a rabbit warren, and that's what reminds me of it the sage. Uh, I always look at this handy bit here for tracks because you always know if anybody's been up here or. Uh, a big snake just across the road. Um, lots of snakes in there, but they in their winter nest now have not seen any for ages, so... However, you don't see them a lot anyway, because you hear you come in and they're gone. So that's why you never see them. Um, this is uh, the back of the place where it had the... Um, These beehives, and they were all in there, but painted blue. They're all gone now. And there's another track that goes down there, and this one goes down and takes you there out of our doors. And when you get to the bottom of the hill, you have three different tracks off of that. There's one goes to the left, goes up over the hill, and brings you back down to the village again near the cemetery. Mara pointing here because there's a wee bird rustling in the trees, and she thinks it's going to get hunted. It's really weird how they're bred into the dogs, isn't it? How the, the instinct they don't know what they've got to do. And she'll go up to the bush and point, paw up, tail straight, and there's only just a wee bird in it. She's never obviously been trained to do that. Because I've had her a couple of months and she's only um, 20 months old. So she's no even two years yet. So she's still a pup, and I don't think she's been trained. She was tied to a tree and abandoned. So we rescued her. This was like a dry steam dive that a guy done, an Albanian guy done a couple of years ago. And we thought he was going to make a garden or something like it. And uh, cleared everything out inside, built this wall, and then um, he's gone. Never seen him again. I don't know why I've done it, um, but you can see the, the walls here that he's made. You see the stone that they made there, because it's not full. The shells. I hope you can see that. Shells and pebbles. And there are thousands of shells around there. This one here, you can see it quite clearly. Uh, all the shells. Ridges there, the little shells that were embedded in it at one point, and now they're off. 
is a water point because they run the water up to all these gardens and everybody gets a meter and uh, takes takes the water from here from the main. These trees here are indigenous to wood. They're like um, oak trees that you get in the UK. But on them are incredible uh, acorns. Now there was loads here yesterday, you see a couple up here. In the next few down I'll be able to show you it closer because the jays have been up here. And the jays take them all. Um, and they take the, the nuts or the acorn out, the little cup it's in. Well, in this case it's a big cup. And take them away to wherever they store them for the winter. And you hear them up squabbling up here, taking them. You see the ones in this tree here? There's loads of them on it. And it's giant acorn. Now look at the leaves. The leaves are just like a rope leaf. Um, but these are far bigger than uh, our acorns that you get here. But you strip that away. And that's what the Jews do. They actually take the acorn out and leave the cup on the tree or knock them down in the ground. But if you knock them down in the ground, they don't go and get them for some reason. Um, they just leave them. Don't trust coming down on the ground. And that's the size of them. Yeah, that's the belt of an acorn. And look at the trees loaded with them. And the jays will strip them clean. Look for dozens on it. These are uh, thistles that have dried up now. And they had big, just like Scottish, there's a big blue head um, in the summer. But frazzled by the sun, like everything else. If you look across there, you'll see um, pillars and the roof and the white sand in front of it. That's the Mycenaean Cemetery. And the Mycenaeans were here, mm, can't remember exactly, but it's a long time. And they built that house and the floor cracked and they looked down to the floor and they could see a grave a uh, cruciform with a cross down in the ground so the archaeolog archaeologist came um, from Denmark I believe and um, they dug out all the graves, I think there were about six of them there you can see on the sandy bit at the front and they got jade and pottery and gold and silver um, and all the pots with the things in it uh, and of course the skeletons which mostly were taken away and they have it between Copenhagen and um, Athens and I think there's some up in Rhodestown as well and I've got a book in the house detailing um, how they were laid out and where they found the pots and the bodies and everything else and the jade and it's fascinating uh, and they just found it because they built somebody tried to build a house there and the floor fell in amazing what could be up in these hills on all these little um, plateau points same as the Mycenaean Center but all the roads go up all through here all over all over the back there where you see the houses there the roads and tracks go up through there and all like this, walkable. And if you go off the road, then you're um, you're going to be into the gorse, and some of it's like brambles, and it'll rip you to shreds. It can be done if you've got um, stout boots and stout trousers on, and walking gear. You can get up there, no problem. That's a, a run from the badger set that's up in the hill there a little bit that fell away and uh, it like a cat it might well be a, a jay though making the sound because they're real good mimics I've been sitting out the back and the jays have been in the tree picking these things off because uh, we've got two in the back garden and I thought it was a phone ringing and it was a jay uh, it's a bird, it's not a cat. Anyway, that's the badger set up there and they blocked it off. But they just come through the fence, hit another bit. 
Marit Kral Enkert i den film. Ja, det er ikke godt. I'm afraid uh, Tiny Dune and about that, there are um, feral cats that are up here. And if I go down there, uh, the mother there, she'll drag them away or she'll rip me to shreds or both. This is another one of these uh, oak trees with the great big acorns. Look at them. A belt or two. And there's a bit that's been blocked off that the badgers come through. Lots of badgers up here, up in the hills. Lots of sets around the right of the place. Now this is easy access for a car. Um, when it's been flattened like this by the grader. But in the winter, when uh, the rain washes the road out, um, they have so many grooves that you would take the bottom out of your car. Well that's just a, a half hour walk round uh, the hills here and uh, I just thought you'd like to see the site. Uh, and I'll do more but on other roads and other places on the island because you just don't think this is green. Everything stays green. <coughs> Summer or winter, uh, apart from the grass, the grass burns off. The grass is green and it's actually coming back now we, because we had a, a thunderstorm went through a couple of weeks ago and all the grass is coming back. It's all in among the olive trees. I'm trying to walk slow here so that the camera is not jumping about. But Mara doesn't know that. Look, she thinks she's a beautiful bird. Every sound, every smell of it. And she does the old pointer thing. If she hears him, she'll look up, paw up, tail straight. Mara, 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 come here. Calm down, calm down. I know it's been a thing, but she'll be back soon enough. You see here, this is all gauged out here, and this is by the rain. It's so strong. This is all flattened by the digger and the grader, and it was all perfect. And then we got that rain, and just from the top of that hill, it's so much water, and that's what it cuts out within a couple of hours. It's like monsoon, and we've had houses flooded. You see the, uh, the bit of shell down there. It's all dotted in the, uh, the hill here. Clam shells and I got an oyster shell once that was complete. And I had it for a few years and I decided I'll open this. I might have a prehistoric peril. This is what I wanted to show you as well, but we'll have a look at this first because I've seen it in the stone here. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. The shell. The big shell in the stone, see it there? Embedded into the stone. There's another one there. You can see that. I don't know where this camera is actually pointing when I'm getting close, but because it's in my heart. This is the other one I want to show you here. This tree has acorns, like our acorns, but for all intents and purposes, it's holly. It's prickly holly. You know, the holly leaves do look like olive, um, sorry, oak leaves in shape. But look, you can see that. That's just Holly, but look at the acorns. They're like our acorns you get back in the UK. And that's on Holly. And then the other ones, they're enormous. It's always the climate that does that, I suppose, but I don't know how we can have Holly with acorns on it. Because all we get in our Holly back home is the red berries, I believe. I don't think we get acorn type things on it. 
but however they can be wrong there's another one of the, the oak and there's the, that type of oak and then the big the big acorns in there he's eating that one up here Weird. And this is a clothing tree. And you can see the, the jacket hanging on it. <laughs> Obviously somebody's uh, lost that jacket and somebody just hung it up there. But it's been there for a while. Anyway, it's good walking. And uh, the sights you see are uh, different every day. And every road and every track you've got different views, different sights. And it's all fantastic if you like walking through Woodland. There's another uh, badger set over there. Um, there's plenty of them. Uh, no